What are you thinking about right now? Right at this instant. Your work? Your schedules? That looming deadline on your project? Why are we in autopilot all the time? Let me ask you this. Do you like going to work on Monday mornings? No. Well, you join one of 216 million working Indians. That's 54% of our working population. Shocking, isn't it? Think about the magnitude of that for a moment. Why is it? Why are so many individuals fund fundamentally unhappy about what they're doing, yet continue to do it? Why do they live life without purpose, without direction, or in that toxic environment? Wake up, go to bed, sleep, repeat, go to work. Is that all there is to life? There has to be more. There is more. Stop living a scripted life. The first step to breaking the shackles is finding your pole star. You've got to realize your purpose on this planet, your driving force, and all your actions will then be directed by a single question. By doing what I'm doing, am I staying true to my purpose? If the answer is yes, you've taken a step in the right direction. If the answers are negative for too many days in a row, you know you need to reorient your course. Okay, that's good philosophy, some of you might say, but what is the pole star and why do I care? The pole star is also called the Dhruv Tara, or the star that does not walk. It is a fixed star in the sky, immovable, and has helped sailors navigate the seas. In our context, it is our life's purpose. It is our orienting point, our fixed point in the spinning world. And it is derived from our values, from our experiences. It keeps us human. It is your internal compass unique to you. And this represents who you are at your core. Now there are books and magazines and seminars and workshops that help you discover your purpose. But we're going to do it right now with just five simple questions. The first, who are you? The second, what do you love to do? The third, who do you do it for? The fourth, what do those people want or need? And lastly, how do they change as a direct result of your actions? The first part's easy. Who are you? Well, hi, I'm Yash. What do you love to do? Do you love to write code? Do you love to talk? Do you love to script? Meditate? If you come up with a lot of things, that's okay. Ask yourself this one question. What is that one thing that you feel supremely qualified to teach other people? And this will help you discover yourself. Successful people place the needs of other people they serve above themselves. And this is probably why they're successful. So herein comes the next three questions, which is, who do you do it for? What do those people want or need? And uh, um, how do they transform as a uh, result of your actions? To give you a little background, after my 10th standard, I joined the bandwagon for preparing one of the entrance exams. It's a three-letter word dubbed as one of the most difficult engineering exams all over the world. And this fact was the only consolation when I didn't get in. I then went on to join another college in Pune and completed my mechanical engineering from there. Throughout the tenure of my course, I kept thinking, is this really me? As I figured out and weighed my options, I weighed, should I go and sit for placements? Or should I go back to the company I'd interned at, which is an automobile giant, by the way? It just didn't feel right. I knew I would be deceiving myself and everyone around me. My sense of purpose came when I started having discussions with the founders of other startups. 
the more I spoke to them, the more I understood their journey, their struggles, their highs and their lows. And as this went on, I understood what I could do to help them. That night, two of my friends and I took down white sheets of paper and wrote down our purpose. It helped me answer the questions, who would I do it for, what do they want, and how would they change as a result of my actions. Having an idea on your head is great, but when you go on to execution, it's a completely different story, isn't it? I remember when I went back home and I told my parents, so this is what I wanted to do. They called all my relatives, and all they said is, come at once. It was an emergency, I guess. It was something of an intervention, and they started discussing my idea. So I explained to them, I want to build places where people belong. I want to help the entrepreneurs and creative people get their greatest work out into the world. They listened to me patiently, occasionally nodding. And then I asked them for feedback. My sister was the first to respond. And I leaned forward. Should I write this down? Nah, it's okay, it's only a couple of words. And I was intently listening. And all she had to say is, are you out of your mind? My grandpa did one better. When I asked him for his feedback, he softly spoke. What has mechanical engineering got to do with any of this? I was speechless. And I went on to tell them what I'm about to tell you now. Our workforce is extremely unhappy and dissatisfied with their jobs. It's the toxic environment. Can we change it? Talk to anyone working in a huge company in a corporate culture and they'll gladly share their sorrows with you. They'll tell you how they're, they're shackles of the system. How the system quashes their ideas, silences their thoughts, and tells them to be machines without souls. How do you expect a person to thrive in such kind of environment? Doesn't it anger you that they have norms such as social exclusion as a part of the system? Doesn't it anger you that an HR executive can, ne can never make the marketing strategy? Does it anger you that an accountant will never deliver the sales pitch? Why are we classified and marked into boxes and put into departments and shelved off? Why is there no collaboration? I want to change this kind of environment. Imagine just for a moment, imagine a place where freelancers can bounce their ideas of small business owners. Imagine a place where tech entrepreneurs can collaborate with artists. Imagine a place where talking to each other and developing new ideas becomes effortless and easy. This is the kind of place that we're trying to build. As we went on with the venture, we tried and factored in everything that we could to help the entrepreneurs. We got accountants on board, we got legal teams on board, we got tech development teams on board. This is so that someone with a half-baked idea could walk into our offices, describe the idea to us, and we would do the best to help him get from idea to execution. And we would do this in a couple of very simple steps. Mentorship is one of the biggies. You are most known by the average of five friends or five people you hang out with. Can you imagine being in a room with so much passion, so much talent? Can you imagine the kind of impact you'll have on a global scale once you make it out there? It's very difficult for an entrepreneur to embark on a journey alone. And every entrepreneur has his shares of struggles and downfalls. Shouldn't we have someone to walk with him, to guide him, to be with him, 
to share his sorrows when he needs them, to be a listener. It's a dark journey and they need that support. What we've tried to do next is try to open our boards to all kinds of sectors. We have artists and chefs, we have writers and authors, we have movie makers and film goers, and we have critics. Imagine the kind of collaboration they can do. This is the power of community, and this is the power of a co-working culture. Some of you sitting here will go on to become doctors. Others will open social clinics. Some might find their purpose and change your fields altogether. You all might become artists or chefs. But whatever you do, straight, stay true to your purpose. Make sure you're true to yourself. There will be a point in your life when you'll realize, instead of helping someone else build their dreams, you want to go after yours. And that, I guarantee you, will be the turning point of your life. Focus on your goals, focus on the needs of the people that you're serving, and everything will work out just fine. If not, find a mentor. A great mentor will guide you along the way. I'd like to end with a quote from Martin Luther King. He said, fly. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But whatever you do, just keep moving forward. Thank you.